In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you some basics for working with manual creation of subtitles. Subtitles give you extra content that you can put on the screen in your projects for your viewers. In some cases, they're extremely helpful. We're going to also do a tutorial in this series that deals with how to bring in subtitle content from either an SRT file or a text file. If you have lots of subtitles, that will save you a ton of time. And then we're going to have another tutorial where we deal with working with subtitles that are created or exported as text to speech or speech to text in PowerDirector 365. So let's get started with the basics in this tutorial. I have this video on the screen and I want to add a subtitle. I do that by clicking on the icon in the upper left corner called subtitles. We're going to focus in this tutorial on create subtitles manually. So let's click on that. And immediately I have a blank screen and not a lot of help. To add a subtitle, you click on the plus. Now it will add it wherever your playhead happens to be. It will not add it if the playhead hasn't moved because the subtitles have to be so many frames apart. So let's move this near the beginning and I'll click a plus. And now you see I have this little pink line appeared on my subtitle track. By the way, the subtitle track will be turned on when you use this tool. Normally it will be off. If I right click anywhere on the left side, I can uncheck show subtitle track and I won't see it. And if I right click again, I can turn it back on. So let's turn it back on as it was. Now why is this seven seconds long? You see it starts with 006 and then seven seconds and six frames. That's because that's my default. If you want to change the default for the normal subtitle length, you click on the gear in the upper right side of the screen. Then you click on the editing button on the left. And then in the lower right, you change your subtitle. I could, for example, just type in the number eight here. Now my new default is going to be eight seconds long. I'll click on OK. Let's add a second one. Now I can move the playhead anywhere. If I move it here, if I see in my time code I'm 4 seconds and 16 frames over, I'll press the plus key. And here it starts at 4.16 and it goes for 8 seconds to 12.16. You notice what it does. It overwrites any other subtitle that you have on your subtitle track. And again, I can move it over and lengthen or shorten these. There's two ways in which you can change the duration and the start and end of a subtitle. The hardest way, but if you want absolute precision, is to use the time code. This starts at 10 seconds and 9 frames. If I want it exactly at 10 seconds, I can click on the frame number, type in a 0, press Enter, and it will have it start at 10 seconds exactly. And I can change the duration from 18.09. You notice this does not change the duration. And I'll put it at, let's say, 17.09, and now I changed it. The other way to change it, obviously, is to take the, the mouse and move the little pink content box. And I can change it by making it shorter or longer in duration. And I can move it left or right. So that's one of the ways in which you can very easily modify the location and duration of your subtitles. Let's add a few more, uh, just to get a few on the screen here. I'll add a plus here. And you notice these are all empty. And if we play the video or render the video, nothing will happen right now because they're content free. And so that gives me five subtitles. Start time, stop time, no content. Let's add some content. I can do that by clicking on the one I want to modify in the subtitle text, and I'll say first. Subtitle. And now I have a subtitle. The location and the font and everything is inherited from the last one you used. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let's see what happens if I have one that's extremely long. I'm going to pause this recording and I'll put a real long subtitle in. If you notice, this one is extremely long. It won't fit on the screen. There's two things I can do with it. I can split it and create a new subtitle after it, but the easiest way to change that, if I want this all together, is to click on the box and then move my cursor wherever I want the split to be and then press Enter. 
and now it will put it on two lines. If I want to do it again, I just move that and repeat the process, and now I have it on three lines. So that's a way in which you can take your subtitle and alter it that way. There's another thing that happens with subtitles. Let's take a second one and then just say second one is not what I expected. Now here's a case where I have two of them and I want to put them in one. Instead of retyping this into the other box, you go to the last one on the list, the bottom one, and then you click on the icon up here which says Merge Subtitles. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control backspace. If I click on this one, now it merges with the one that was above it. I see I have a misspelling. And so that's an easy way to change that. So I can take it and move it with the one that's above it. Likewise, I can also split. If I want to have this one in two separate subtitles, I put the cursor here and then I click on the split. And after the word one, it will split it to another one. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of is you need a blank one at the end. So if there's not enough room for everything to flow down, if you're going to split, you're going to get an error message. So, but a blank subtitle doesn't affect anything. So it's a good practice to have an extra one there just in case. So that's how you add them and split them and cause multiple lines to appear on any one screen. Let's look at something else about a subtitle. You can control where it shows up on the screen. I'm going to click on the four headed arrow. And now I have this box, my X, Y position. My Y position is uh, vertical. My X position is horizontal. If I change the Y position with a slider, I can move it all the way to the top of the screen or anywhere else. And the X position will be left and right. This is not alignment. It's just the position on the screen. I can reset it or I can apply it to all of the subtitles in the project we we'll just reset it for now. Another thing you might want to do with your subtitles is change the look and feel of them. That's what our T here is. This is all about formatting. I'm going to click here, and now we're going to see the ways in which we can format that. We can change the font family. Let's just change it to something more simple than the one we had there. Uh, let's go Oswald Medium. And we can take turn the border on or off. And we can change the text color. Let's make the text just a simple white. Click on OK. I don't think the sample screen is all that helpful because it's so small. But what I'll have often do is just click on OK and see if I like it. And there's my subtitle in my new font. So I can click back again and I can apply it to everything. I'll do that. And now it applied them to every single one. So you can change the formatting of one subtitle to be different than the formatting of another subtitle. So those are some of the basics. In the next exercise, we're going to show you, if you have lots of subtitles, how to import and export the content so you don't have to spend your time doing all of your editing in these tiny, tiny windows inside of PowerDirector. A real time saver. That's next time.